One of the best feelings you can get while browsing movies is the one you get when you discover that your favorite film has been remastered and re-released. Then you purchase it, rush home with your new Blu-ray of Blade Runner or whatever, and force your significant other to watch it with you, pointing out all the minute little differences. But despite how often we fork over large sums of money for better versions of movies or music we already own, rarely, if ever, do studios explain what makes a film or music more mastery. Let's start with what master means in the first place. So in the worlds of film and music, it's a remnant of the old days of vinyl, an adage borrowed from the manufacturing community referring to an object's original mold from which many copies can ultimately be made. Oftentimes though, the final versions of records and then later films wouldn't be directly copied from the master anyway, but instead from a small run of high quality copies of the master known as mothers. But nowadays when we hear the term remastered, oftentimes what they mean to say is transferred from an older analog medium to a newer digital one while meeting all the necessary requirements to be certified as DVD, Blu-ray, Laserdisc, or whatever. You see, back in the days of analog, there was a lot of contention as to which type and size of film was best. So there ended up being quite a wide range of film using an even wider range of color grading and aspect ratios. So oftentimes the first step in remastering a film is scanning the master copy with a special specialized digital camera, usually at a minimum of 2K resolution to meet DVD and Blu-ray standards, but actually going up as high as 8K and more resolution. Once technicians have scanned the original work at their desired resolution, they begin restoring the digital print by using software, which does things like remove film impurities that have been transferred, such as dust spots and cigarette burns, an industry term for the corner blip on screen, which indicated to the editor where splice points between reels went, they will also likely adjust the color fill and contrast to try walking that line between the modern standards that viewers expect and the film's original intended appearance. From there, it's just a matter of cutting it down to the proper aspect ratio. Remember that old warning on films all the time? Blah, 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 that something has been formatted to fit your screen. So it'll most likely be 16 by nine these days for now, anyway. And then after the visuals have been settled, technicians turn towards the audio. Once again, they utilize specialized software along with a lot of time and care in this case to help them remove sound impurities like background mosquito noise or to boost dialogue or edit audio levels as needed. And more importantly, if you've got a you know fancy surround sound speaker set up, adding effects like surround for the modern movie watcher. And pretty much there you have it. If a studio says that they've done something more than that, well, it's one of two things. Either they're just trying to get you hyped up to get your nostalgia and therefore pocketbook flowing, or they actually have done more than that. Something that upsets a lot of people, some of which get upset about the mere act of, you know, colorizing a film, saying it takes away from the purity of the viewing experience, while others are, it takes a lot more to get them upset. You know, things like adding do back so now we can buy Star Wars in its fifth form since its release, or however many they have now. It's too, probably too many to count. I can't count very high. Speaking of counting, FreshBooks. Why are you doing all of your accounting when you get home at the end of the day, when you're tired after you've been doing, you know, I don't know, contract work or plumbing or whatever the case may be? No, no, you guys should be using an online tool that lets you do your invoicing, get paid and track all your expenses much more easily. You can keep details like cash flow and, you know, the history of each job and each invoice all in one place and it offers cool tools like like being able to send the invoices to the client through FreshBooks, see if they viewed it, and then accept payment right through it. No more, oh, I didn't get your invoice, or oh, I didn't see it. No more excuses, blah, 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 it's enough of that. If you're your own boss, you should be using stuff that makes you feel like a boss, and FreshBooks is the easy way of doing all your billing online so you'll have more time to do the things that you should actually be doing. So head over to freshbooks.com slash techquickie for a free trial, and don't forget to enter techquickie in the how did you hear about us section.
Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, then do that thing. If you disliked it, do the other thing. Check out our other channels. We've got, uh, yeah, gee, I don't even know what's gonna be. Oh yeah, our Skylake review is probably up on Linus Tech Tips, as well as the car painting video on Channel Super Fun. So feel free to check those out. If you only care about Tech Wiki, then hey, maybe you have a Tech Wiki you'd like to see. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fast as Possibles, and I think that's pretty much it. See you guys again next time. Don't, don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. That too.